new to video editing and not sure where to start, well, stick around because in this video, we are going to help get you started by showing you the import process to get your media and your video clips into DaVinci Resolve and then be ready to start editing very quickly in a couple of different ways. Just before we get started, welcome indeed to the channel. My name is Alex. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and have been for a few years now. And I love DaVinci Resolve because I do think it's a fantastic video editing platform for everybody, be that beginners up to seasoned professionals. One of the great advantages to DaVinci Resolve is that they have a free version and they also have a studio version. The free version is indeed free. You can go straight to the Blackmagic Design website and download it for free right now. They actually have just announced a new version, DaVinci Resolve 17, which is currently in beta. In this video, we're gonna be looking at DaVinci Resolve 16 just because it is the current staple release. But yep, go and get it right now and play with it. There are a few features that are not in the free version, but you get in the studio version and it's only 239 pounds excluding VAT. So it is well worth looking at. But for the meantime, let's work on getting footage into DaVinci Resolve for the very first time, because as a beginner, it could be very daunting not knowing exactly what you're looking at, where to go or how to do it. And there are a couple of different ways that you can import media into DaVinci Resolve. So I wanted to go through those with you right now. So jumping over to DaVinci Resolve 16, we get the very first page that we look at once we've opened up an untitled project, and that is the cut page. Now, I'll come back to that in just a moment, but for the most part, I want to just focus on the media page, which is the initial page that we can use in DaVinci Resolve to bring in media and organize it ready for our project beginning to start editing. So we have a very simple interface really here. We have a window on the top left. We have a viewer in the middle. We have a panel over here on the right, which is currently showing metadata. At the moment, there's nothing to inspect because we have no clips in our media pool. And the media pool is an important thing to think about in DaVinci Resolve. It's basically the hub for all of your project assets, like your video clips, any still frames, any graphics, any audio, all sorts of bits and pieces like that get stored in the media pool. By default, you have a master bin, which is really like a folder that you put everything into and that gets created automatically. So we have a master folder here and we're gonna put our clips in here. So add clips from media storage to get started. It shows you what to do. And the media storage area is this area that we looked at initially up here. So I've got all the volumes mounted to my computer up here, and we're gonna have a little look through this to find the right ones. In fact, what you can actually do is once you've found the folder you like, you can simply right click it and save it as a favorite if you'd like to. So if this is a place where you're gonna be storing all your clips, then do so there. You'll notice that that pops up now at the bottom. And I've got this little folder here where I've got some clips in here. Now I want to bring these clips into my media pool. Now, how do I do that? So it's quite simple. All I need to do is marquee select by finding a blank space in the window, dragging to select, selecting them all, and then simply dragging them down into this media pool area and letting go. Automatically, DaVinci Resolve will spot that there's a frame rate mismatch, and we'll come onto that in another video, but there's a frame rate mismatch in the current project settings. Would you like it to change so that the timeline frame and the video format match? We want to do that in this case and say, yes, we do want to change. And we hit change. And then that will automatically add all of our clips to our media pool. And that means they're now in the project. In this top left window, this is just showing us where they live on our hard drive. Here we have now actually imported them. Now, bear in mind, we haven't brought them in and they're not now existing on our hard drive. They still exist on our hard drive. It's just they now are being referenced in our project as well. If we were to move these files, these clips would go offline and you'd see that because it would indicate with a red thumbnail to say this clip is no longer where we think it is and there'll be an option to relink it and again we can show you that in another video but that was quite straightforward simply selecting and dragging let me undo that for a second by pressing command and z there we go and we're now back in the situation where we were before with no media in the media pool if you want to select these clips you can also do so by simply selecting one at a time commands clicking will also let you select any clip that you click on. And incidentally, if you keep the command key pressed and click on one you have selected, you can unselect it. So now that we've got a selection of clips ready, we can again simply drag them in and let go. And we're going to only bring in those particular clips. Let me get back up again. Another thing that you can also do if you'd like to is just simply press Command A on a Mac to select all of them. And then again, bring them in as we did before. So any of the normal selection methods that you'd normally use on a computer or PC would work fine. Another thing you can do is once you've selected all your clips, you can simply right click on one of the thumbnails and add into media pool. 
and then it will simply add all of those files there for you, no problem at all. Let me just undo that again. One other thing that you can also do is whilst you're looking at your clips in your media storage location, you can actually double click it to load it into the viewer. By default, you wouldn't necessarily see that, it would just look like this. And you can actually use this little ellipse here to get a zoomed audio waveform or full clip waveform. That gives you an idea of what the waveform is doing. So that's the audio for this particular clip is doing. And obviously when the talent may be talking or pausing or maybe doing a second take or something like that. This is useful as well because we can now scrub through this clip. And let's say we only want to bring in a certain portion of this clip. So let's say it's this particular shot here. I want to mark an in point by pressing the I key. I can also use these icons here to do the same thing. So I can now scrub through and mark an out point here. So the I key to mark an in, the O key to mark an out, or simply using these options here to mark in and to mark out. Now that I've got this option selected, what I can actually do is just simply drag directly in from the viewer and let go. And now what we have here when we load this clip up is we have Every shot was original and then just the clip that I loaded up, just the section of the clip that I loaded up with the ins and outs previously. So you notice here, if I double click this clip and we look up here, the duration is one second and 23 frames. If I undo that and I come back up and click on the main clip itself and then drag it in from there without any ins and outs, you'll see that it's actually 13 seconds and 14 frames. So essentially what I've done by doing a portion of the clip with an I and the O key and then dragging it in from there is I've just only brought in a portion of the clip, which can be really handy if you have got a particular load of clips and you don't want to bring in all of the media that's associated with a particular clip, you just need a small snippet of it, that's a great way of getting around that problem. Quick time out. If you are a beginner video editor and you would like to get to grips with DaVinci Resolve, then why not just hit that subscription button and come back again for another video another time. We're putting lots of good content out all about DaVinci Resolve and all about video editing and how you can be more familiar with that process and we'll be there to guide you. So just take a second, hit that subscription button and then we'll get back to the training. So we're still looking at importing media and we can also do it in a number of different ways. So one other way that we can do that is at any point in the media pool on any of the pages, we can simply right click, we can come down to import media, we can also use the keyboard shortcut command I, or we can come up to the file menu, we can come up to import file, import media, and again, we can also import media that way too. So let's just do that in this case. So if we go file, import media, what you'll get is a different dialog box pop up, which will be your default browser dialog box. You can simply then navigate to the folder that you'd like to navigate to and find your footage, whichever that might be. In this case, we've got some footage here and we could then simply select our footage and open it and it would then load into DaVinci Resolve, no problem at all. My dislike with that method, however, is that you can't easily see your media and scrub through your media beforehand and preview it essentially before bringing it in. Typically file browsers aren't particularly good at viewing media back and I think DaVinci Resolve is very, very good at handling a lot of different formats and codecs or types of videos basically that you can then bring in to the platform itself and edit. So I think for me, I actually prefer to use this media storage location whenever I can, navigate using this left-hand side menu to find the folder and the volume path that I want, locate the media, have a good look at it, and if it's the right clip, I can then bring it in to the media pool. So let's just show you that on the cut page as well. Going into the cut page, no clips in the media pool, we can simply right click and import media like we just showed you. Or we can also come up to these two options here and we have import media and we have import media folder. The difference there is when we import media by itself, again, we should get a dialog box that will pop up and we can obviously import the individual media by itself if we'd like to. But the import media folder essentially will allow us to navigate to a folder of media. So in this case, I'm gonna just go to this particular folder here of our wedding we shot recently video, and I'm gonna bring this whole video folder and I'm gonna hit open. Now, this will take just a moment or two to do this. It's gonna ask about the frame rate. I'm gonna say change in this situation, and it's brought in the video bin or the video folder, like we said earlier. If you double click, you can see that it's respected and, and held onto those video folders that I've already got set up in my media browser, which is quite nice because now I can click through and I can see all my different media folders, no problem at all, and that's a really nice thing to be able to do. Let me just back that up again, and let's come into the edit page. 
in the edit page, which is a, a much a little bit of a daunting page if you've never done any editing before, can look a little bit frightening when you first start. But let's just remember some of the key elements that we're talking about, the media pool being the main house for all of your media. So let's go over here to the media pool, which is in the top left corner. By default, you may actually see it looking more like a full side of the screen. That's absolutely fine. Once we're in here again, you'll see the same message here. We can simply right click, import media, or we can go up and we can do file and we can do import media, import file, import media from there. And that's absolutely no problem at all. Another thing, however, that I'd also like to show you is if I come away and I bring up a window of my browser, what I can actually do is I can find a particular bit of footage that I'd like. So here I have my media. I can simply grab it, drag it in, and then let go. It will ask me if I want to change the frame rate. In this case, I do. Let me change it. And there we are. We're back up and running. We have all the footage just dragged in directly. So that's not to say that you can't do it from the media page. Uh, you can do it obviously from the cut, the edit page. You can even do it from the color and fusion pages. Anywhere where there's a media pool, you will be able to bring in other media, graphics, audio, whatever it is that you want to bring in. But that's just a few different ways to do it. And really it's to your preference, whether you just prefer lassoing, dragging it in, right clicking, add to media pool, or even just importing directly by dragging it from your file browser. So there we go, very straightforward, a couple of different ways that you can bring media into DaVinci Resolve and start your editing process. I appreciate at first, it can sound like a bit of a silly question, like how do I just bring footage in? But it's an important one. And if we get it right, then it really does help and sets us up for the rest of the process. Please don't worry if that was a little daunting at first and you weren't sure how to do it, because if you don't know, you don't know. And sometimes you just need a quick video like this to put you straight and get you started on your video editing journey. If this was useful to you guys, I'd love it if you could just take a second and pop that like button on for me. And also do let me know in the comments below what particular part of the video was most helpful to you. And if there's anything else that we can do, if there are any other challenges that you're facing when it comes to video editing, and we'll try and address those in another video. Thank you very much indeed for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful and we'll see you in the very next one. Bye for now.